Today we will be dealing with interrupt handling in Arto's environment and this is for semester 8 embedded systems CS404 for computer science and engineering students. Now we will go to interrupt handling in Arto's environment. First we will have a short introduction. What is an interrupt? Or when that you already know what is an interrupt. An interrupt is something that occurs instantaneously and when interrupt occurs you need to execute the interrupt service routine ISR must be executed and what is the relevance or properties of ISR ISR has very high priority it has more priority even more priority than the OS functions and it need not wait for semaphores or mutex or in short the ISRs have very high priority so whenever an interrupt occurs you need to execute the ISRs or ISRs are used for handling the interrupt now let's see how interrupts are handled in an Arto's environment embedded systems might have an OS and if it has an Arto's real-time operating system then how do we handle the interrupt there are basically three techniques we will learn the techniques one by one the first technique direct call to an ISR by the interrupt source this which means that the source that generates the interrupt that source will directly call the ISR Usually in normal cases, it is the OS that calls the ISR. But in the technique number one, it is the interrupt causing hardware that calls the ISR. Now, we'll, we'll see the steps in detail. As you can see in the diagram, there are basically four steps. Let's go to step number one. In step number one, what happens is that an interrupt occurs and when the interrupt occurs the hardware source or the source of the interrupt calls the ISR directly that is what is seen in step number one as you can see in the step number one the hardware that causes the interrupt it directly calls the ISR that is what is seen in step number one so when the interrupt occurs the process that is currently being executed that must be temporarily stopped and its context must be saved and immediately after that the ISR starts execution that is what is shown in step number one now in step number two during the execution of the ISR the ISR will generate an enter message or a start message that is what is shown in step number two and this enter message or start message is to inform the real-time operating system that the interrupt service routine has started its execution or the ISR has taken control of the CPU because in this particular technique the ISR is initiated directly by the hardware source the real-time operating system of the OS has no idea that the ISR has started execution why because the interrupt source itself calls the ISR directly that is what is shown in step number one and step number two and enter messages given to the Arctos to inform the Arctos that the ISR has started execution. Now, in step number three, what happens is that the ISR will generate some messages known as event messages. And these messages are intended to initiate some other tasks. Or these particular messages or event messages that is generated by the ISR is used for initiating some other tasks. We will discuss about these tasks later. That is step number three. Now what happens in step number four is that the ISR completes its execution and the control returns back to Arctos by sending an exit message. So this is the first technique. Now we'll go to the next technique. So in this particular technique, it is the Arctos that calls the ISR. In the previous technique, the interrupt generating hardware directly calls the ISR. But here it's not like that. Here it is the Arctos that calls the ISR. The interrupt generating hardware will intimate the Arctos that 
an interrupt has occurred and it is the RTOS that calls the interrupt service routing. Now we will see the second technique in detail, the steps in the second technique. So here step number one, in step number one what happens is that the same thing, the interrupt has occurred and the interrupt generating hardware source will inform the RTOS, that is step number one. Now what will the RTOS do? RTOS will allow the process of the task that is currently being executed. That task is allowed to complete its critical section or that task is allowed to execute till its preemption point. After that, in step number two, the RTOS will save the context of that particular task that is going to be interrupted. So when the interrupt occurs, the task that is currently being executed is interrupted and that particular tasks context will be saved that is done in step number two now after saving the context of that particular task or after interrupting the task that is currently being executed in step number three the RTOS will call the ISR so as you can see here here the RTOS is the one who calls the ISR whereas in the previous technique it was the hardware source that directly calls the ISR but here in step number 3, you can see that after saving the context of the current process, it is the RTOS that calls the ISR. That is step number 3. Now in step number 4, you can clearly see as in the previous technique, you can see that in step number 4, what the ISR does is that the ISR will generate some event messages. As you already know, these event messages are used for initiating some other tasks. So that is what is done in step number 4, the ISR will generate some event messages. Now step number 5, in step number 5 the ISR completes its execution and the control returns back to RTOS. Now the control was with the RTOS. What next? There are two options, either the interrupted task, the task that was interrupted due to interrupt either that can be executed or else we know that during the ISR execution some event messages were generated for some tasks. So either you can take the event messages and then the tasks uh, who are waiting for those event messages that task can be executed or the task that was interrupted due to the interrupt that can be executed. So you have two options and which one to execute? whether the interrupted task should be executed or the task for whom the event messages were generated which one to be executed that depends on the priority of both the tasks if the task that was interrupted if that has more priority then the RTOS will schedule that interrupted task or that interrupted task can continue its execution by restoring the context okay so now these are the five steps in technique number two now we will go to technique number three, the last and final technique. Here the steps are same, but there are some additional steps or three additional steps are there. In the previous technique there were five steps. Here we have three more additional steps. So it's very easy to learn also. Okay, so here we have to bring about the concept of ISTs. Now what is ISTs? To handle the interrupts, we need ISR. Apart from the ISR, there are ISTs, interrupt service threats. So there are two things, ISRs and ISTs. So what is the difference? ISR is very short. It executes for a very minute amount of time. It has very high priority and it performs the important and necessary codes for interrupt handling whereas ISTs have lesser priority and they perform the remaining code for handling the interrupts or they perform the less important part of the interrupt handling. If you see the previous two techniques I have already discussed that the ISRs will generate some even messages for initiating some tasks. These tasks are actu actually ISTs. 
so actually the isrs are generating event messages for starting the ists and isrs perform the important critical codes for interrupt handling and isr ists perform the remaining code so isr has more priority ist has less priority isr execute for a short amount of time whereas ist execute for a longer period now let's go into detail into the third and final technique so the first five steps are same we have we'll just have a quick look into it first the interrupt occurs step number one the interrupt occurs and the interrupt source will inform the os and what does the os do os have to save the context of the current process and the current process or the current task is interrupted and it's its context is saved that is done in step number two and in step number three after saving the context of the current task or after interrupting the current task in step number three the autos will call the isr isr starts execution and in step number four the isr will generate some even messages and these messages are intended for the ists and these messages will be stored in a fifo okay that is step number four the isr generates some event messages step number five isr completes its execution and the control goes back to the autos that is shown in step number five now now what now the control is with the autos the isr has completed its execution now what does autos do autos will go into the fifo and it checks the event messages and based on the event messages the corresponding ists will be given a chance to execute in short ists will execute for sure after isrs only after the ists we will execute the interrupted task whereas in the previous technique after the execution of the isr either ist or the interrupted task can execute but in the third technique after the execution of the isr it is the ist who execute that means the interrupted task has the least priority isr has the highest priority followed by ist and the least priority is for the interrupted task so here in step number six that means after the completion of the isr in step number six the autos will call the ists depending on the event messages generated by the isr and in step number six the control goes to the ist and ist executes and in step number seven IST has completed its execution and in September 7 the control is given back to the autos and now the autos can execute the interrupted task by retrieving the context of that interrupted task so that's it the three techniques i hope it's clear to you okay so here the more priority one is isr followed by ist and least one is interrupted task whereas in a second technique either the ist or the interrupted task can execute after the isr whereas in this technique after isr it is the ist so this technique where the autos in is informed about the interrupt after that autos will call the isr and then we have something known as ist also that's it thank you